Hi. See this little glass? Mm -hmm. Well, I've just put a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt in here and mixed them up thoroughly. All I want you to do now is separate them. Separate them? Yes. How are you going well, to go about it? If you could taste it, and if it's sweet, it's sugar, and if it's not, it's salt. Well, except they're both mixed together so that you'd have both mm -hmm. of them on your tongue at the same time and they dissolve. Yeah, well, you could burn it. Sugar turns to carbon, and whatever is left is the salt. True, mm -hmm. but then the sugar's gone. You burned it up. Um, well, under a microscope, the salt looks like cubes. You can do it that way. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have to sit there <laughs> yeah. and pick them and separate. Well? Well, before you leave today, I'll show you how you can separate the salt from the sugar without affecting either one of them. Without doing that would take a long time, though, wouldn't it? No, Each it'll grain? about two, three seconds. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and when you understand how to, how to separate the salt from sugar, you'll also be able to identify these things over here. Can you identify them? A fork, uh, refrigerator cover, you know, a piece of film. But that's not what I want you to identify. I want you to tell me what kind of plastics they are. What kind of plastics? Yes, you know, polyethylene, mm -hmm. polystyrene, poly, you know, all these various plastic names. Yeah. Do you know any of them? Well, this is cellophane. I oh, know cellophane. That. Okay, you've got one. Easy. But you don't know what this soapy sort of plastic mm -hmm. is, or this, you know, flexible, tough stuff, or this mm -hmm. stuff that looks like glass, or that, you know, the yeah. fork that comes with the package, you know, food mm -hmm. and this film. You don't know what the plastics mm -hmm. are. Well, what is that? <laughs> How is that going to help me do this? You mean the salt, salt and sugar? Salt and sugar, yeah. And this? Well, it all has to do with density. Now let's start from the beginning with density, with sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. Plastic sugar cubes. Plastic sugar cubes and salt and sugar mixture. Right. Uh, sugar cubes. Mm -hmm. See them? Let us assume that each one of those is one cubic centimeter. One cc, one, one cubic cc. centimeter. They're not, but let's pretend they are. And let's assume that it, each one weighs one gram. Now here are ten of them. If you weigh them, what will they weigh? It'll be 100 grams. Right, but 10 grams. Each one is one. One, so one times 10 is 10. 10, okay. okay. All together be 10. Now, in order to find out what one weighs, if you, only, if you know what 10 weighs, how do you mm -hmm. find out? You simply divide by the number, right? Right. What if there were only nine? They would weigh nine grams, and how many of them are there? Well, if there are nine, then each one will weigh one. Still, yeah, you divide, nine to nine you divide one. the weight by the number of units. And if there are only uh, four, you weigh them, weigh four grams, mm -hmm. and you divide by four to find out what one of them weighs. It'll be one. And the idea is, to find the density, you weigh whatever it is, and then find the volume, and divide the weight by the volume. And that'll give you density. And that'll give you the density. Mm -hmm. Let's try that with water now. Weight by volume. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try it with water. Here are two flasks, or two beakers. Mm -hmm. And I put a little shot in that one so that they're exactly the same, so they're both balanced out now. I see. Now I'm going to put a 100 gram weight on this side. Mm -hmm. And you pour water in here until you get them to balance. Uh, too much. Okay, now I have a little eyedropper, and I'll take some out until they... Get to be the same. Uh... Oh, there it goes. It's very delicate. Pretty close? Yes, it's about balanced. Just about. <laughs> One more drop. Now, just to make it. 100 grams mm -hmm. of water is how much? Read well, what it says 100. on the side. Uh, how much okay. weight? Uh, uh, how, how much volume is it? You read from the bottom of the mm -hmm. meniscus, the bottom of the, of the surface of the water. About 100. 100 grams, mm -hmm. or 100 uh, cubic centimeters. Mm -hmm. So what is the density of water? Remember, the, the, weight. the weight, 100 mm -hmm. grams, divided by the volume, 100 well, cc. It's one. 100 one. to 100 is right. one. It's 100, okay? So one is its density. Fine, remember density. now, the density of water is one. Mm -hmm. Now, here are three, three little jars. See them? Mm -hmm. I want you to now predict whether they're going to float or sink by finding out what their density is. I need the weight and the okay. volume. Okay, uh, I have some signs in the back and I don't want you to see them. Mm -hmm. So here's one of them, mm -hmm. and I'll put on the proper amount of weights, and you now tell me whether it's gonna... It's 100, yeah, you better. Oh, oh wait, first, before you do that, I have to, I have to show you what the uh, volume is, right? Mm -hmm. We need the volume. Here's, here's, here's the, what does they go up to? 
400. 400 cc's. Okay, now I'll sink this one down into it, and we'll see how much water it displaces in order to find its volume. Well, it goes from 400 to 500. So what is the volume of the... Well, that'd be 100 cc's. 100, so it's nice and easy. Yeah, and that's nice why all this tape and stuff is around there to make it come out nice and even. So oh, I see. Okay, now, other than the little drops of water we got on there, now, now, we, need weight. now we need the weight. Mm -hmm. 100 grams and 10 grams. 110. Yeah, it's about... Yeah, except for the weight of the water. If I oh. wiped it off, it would come oh, out to 110. 100. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what is the density of this one? Well, you take the weight, which is 110, yes. divide it by 100, which is its volume, and you get 1.1 density. Oh, 1.1. I've already written it on there. Oh, so I the see. density of that one is 1.1. 1. 1. You get the idea now? Yes. Here's another one. I won't let you see what this one is. And except for the weight of the water drops I've got on there. Mm -hmm. 50, 20, and 20. That's 90. And we said the volume was 100. Yeah, same volume as the others. So it's about balanced. So 90. Say 90 divided by 100 is 0. 0.9, 9 tenths. Oh, yeah. Very good, 0. 0.9. Okay. That's it. All right. Say. Here's the last one. Mm. 100. Yeah. 20 and 20. 140. So it's 140 divided by 100, which is 1.4. 1.4? 1.4. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. That's it. That's it. Okay, now, the water. Mm -hmm. If we put a, a, a 100 cubic centimeter volume that weighs 1.4 density mm -hmm. into water that is 1, a density of 1, this is a density of 1.4, this is a density of 1, should it sink or float? It'll sink. It's not fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Density of water? One. One. Density of this? Point point nine. nine. Will it'll it sink? It'll, it'll float. It'll float. Right? Right. It'll right, float. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I have one more. Density of water, one. Density mm -hmm. of a bottle, one point one. Yeah. So it'll sink. Sink. It's sunk. Okay. Oh, it's now you notice by knowing what the density of both the liquid and this th uh, and the little objects are, mm -hmm. you can predict whether they're going to sink or float. Yes, yeah, pretty easy. V pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, but now I'm going to give you some different liquids. With different densities. Yes. Come with me. See that chart? Mm -hmm. Density. Notice mm -hmm. here's water at one. Yes. Gasoline. Point seven two. Sugar water. That's one point. 1.2. I made it 1.2. In other words, by adding sugar, I got it to come to 1.2. Oh, I see. Sugar itself, however. Yeah, 1.53. Yeah, and carbon tetrachloride. 1.6, 1.5. Ethyl iodide, 1.93. Mm -hmm. And salt. It's 2. 2.6. 2. 2. Mm -hmm. All right. Get more and less. Here is the sugar water. Bottle, density, 0. 0.9. 0. 0.9. Sugar water. It's at 1.2. Will it float or sink? It will float. All right, take Try it, see it. if it does. It will float. It floats. It floats. Mm -hmm. Density. 1.1. 1. 1. 1.2, 1. it'll float. But this sank in water, remember? Yes, well, this has a greater density. Greater density. Water was All right, one. so it should float, you say? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. it does. All right, next one. Density, 1.4. 1. 1. Sugar 1. water, 1.2. 1. 2. Should it sink or float? It'll sink. All right, try it. Haha, uh -huh, right. very good. Nice. Next. Carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride, 1.6. 1.6. Mm, it's higher. Will the point 0.9 float in it? Yes, easily. <laughs> Way high, too, doesn't yes, it? Yes, way on top. The density, uh, the, the jar that's a density of 1.1, will it float in carbon tetrachloride? A yes. Density of 1.6? Yes. Should. Mm -hmm. That should float. Okay. Mm -hmm. Density 1.4 flow uh, in a in a liquid of 1.6 density. It'll float. Notice that one sank in sugar water, didn't it? Yes, yeah, but this has a greater density. density. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, notice I keep covers on these because carbon tetrachloride is dangerous. You shouldn't let it, you know, open the air. You shouldn't breathe it any more than you have oh. to. See that one? Gasoline. Gasoline. What What's is its gasoline? Density? Is 0. 0.72. 0. 0.72. Mm -hmm. Will the point 0.9? That's point 0.72, it'll sink. Try it. That floated in everything so far, didn't it? Yes. 
<laughs> it sunk. Not in that. Do you want to bother with these two, or do you want to... Well, those two will sink. All right, try them. Okay. Point one, one point four, definitely should sink. Sink. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the one point one goes clunk. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, now you see how you can make objects sink or float by putting them in various liquids that, uh, that have various densities. Mm -hmm. You remember that salt and sugar problem? Yeah. Look at the chart. See if you can figure out how you could separate salt from sugar. Well, the salt is... 2.6. Sugar, sugar is 1.59. Well, if you could get something in the middle yes. and get the sugar to float or opposite and the salt to go one way, yeah. well, then you could separate the okay, two. Okay, what would you use? Well, something between 1.5 and 2.6. Yeah, uh, well, carbon tetrachloride looks pretty good. Right, carbon tetrachloride. But you notice, that? notice that the density of, of sugar and carbon tetrachloride is very close, so it would take a long time for the sugar to come up. So you see that ethyl iodide? Oh, that's even better, 1.93. That, right, that's the only reason I have it in there is because oh. it's easy <laughs> yeah. because the sugar will float up quickly because of the, it's uh, so much denser than sugar, mm -hmm. but the salt should sink. So let's try it. Okay. Uh, okay. You want to get that little uh, glass of sugar that I mixed up? Okay. And here is the liquid, ethyl iodide. iodide. I'll put some of that mixture in here. Mix it up good. And the sugar should go to the top, and the salt to the bottom. Okay, now, see I have it here in this little test tube, mm -hmm. with, with, and I can take it out of here and stick it over there in that projector. So I'll project it up on the wall. So you go around over there. I'll get it into position first. Turn on the light. And there it is all f up at the top. Now I'll take yeah. it out and shake it. I'll give it a good shake, so I get everything all mixed up. And then take a look at it. <laughs> They're all going in different ways. Now, tr start at yeah. the middle and see what's happening right there. Well, you can see the separation. Yeah. Some are going up and some, some are going, going down. down. See, now, take, going follow up. those that are going down, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, they're going straight down. Those would be okay. the salt, right? Yeah, some of those little ones are going up, though, too. See them? Yes. Yeah, and, that one. And go up to the top, you'll see mm -hmm. there's those a, are sugar. Yeah, the sugar on top. Here, let me shake it up again so we can see it. Now, you see how there's a layer of sugar forming way up here at the top, mm -hmm. and down at the bottom is, is a layer of salt. That's pretty neat. Isn't that That's pretty neat? Good. By simply getting a liquid that has a density between the two, you can separate them. And this system, this same exact system, is used by, um, in mining. They take ore and grind it all up so that they free of the various mm -hmm. parts of it. Now they want to separate it. So, oh, I see. so, so all they, like they do is find a liquid that has a density in between the two, and they simply then uh, float it in there, and they have one sink, and the light ones float to the top, and they can collect the two. And it's a very useful system. Well, that's pretty good, but what does it have to do with plastics? If we want to find out which is which, why should we bother? Well, uh, let's 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 go one step further now. This time, remember those glasses that I showed you that had carbon tetan, gasoline, and so oh, forth yes. in them. This time, you have to identify which is the liquid without le seeing the label. Yes, without seeing the label. Come over here, I'll show you how we can do that. Let's start. I'll turn these labels all this way so that you can't see them. But I'll bring up one marked what? There's water. Water. What's the density of water? One. Okay. And it was one. Now here's a long light bulb. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, drilled out the bottom and added lead shot here and then put some epoxy cement on it to make it heavier than normal. And you see these marks and lines on it? Little marks on it. See? Mm -hmm. Point 0.8, 1.0, point mm -hmm. point 0.2, 4, and 6, and so forth. If I float this in water, you see, I calibrated this by putting it in like that and read what, re read where the level of the water is on the light bulb. It says 1, 1.0, 1. Yeah, 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, this has a density of 1. Oh, I see. You can tell when it floats you. Water that does way. have 1. Right. I see. Now, what happens mm -hmm. if the liquid is going to be denser? Isn't it going to float higher? Yes. Well, you see, the levels will indicate it here. Oh, I see. And if the liquid isn't as dense... It'll go down. It'll go down. All right. With this now, you have to identify those three liquids. So turn okay. your back. Oh, all right. Right. Okay. Now, don't look at the labels. I won't. And you just put this little thing called a hydrometer. Hydrometer? Yeah. And in it, and see what you get. All right. Well, this goes low. It goes to 1.6. 1.6. Yeah. 
not very dense. <laughs> it is very dense if it's 1.6. Oh, that's right. It is dense. To yes, because it it's yes. pushing it up. 1.6. 1. 1. All right, 6. look at the chart. 1. What is 1.6? That's salt. Huh? Oh, that's 2.6. 1. 1.6 1. is carbon tetrachloride. Okay, here, and let me turn this around to see if you're right. Carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride. Mm -hmm. All right. Try that one. Okay, next one. That looks like 1.2. 1.2? What's 1.2 over here? 1.2 is sugar water. Yeah. Is sugar water? Sugar, sugar water. water. Well, what's left? It couldn't be gasoline, could it? Well, if it is gasoline, what should its density be? 0.72. Okay, put it in there once and see. <laughs> it goes very low. It goes very low. Now, notice the last density mark on here was... 0.8. 0.8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 0.8. So, uh, obviously, this sinks down below it, so what, it must be less than 0. 0.8, at least. Yeah, well, 0. 0.72. 0. 0.72. Gasoline. Gasoline, right? Gasoline. Right. Very good. It's a good way of finding out. Yes, you see, now you can begin to identify some, some liquids by doing this. Well, now, this is a very practical sort of thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, here. See this little float? Yes, it looks like it. See, there's a weight yeah. at the bottom. And then the marks going up and down the thing. Just like you have. Same thing, you see. And when you could float it in a liquid and you could tell. And that's made for just that purpose. Have you ever noticed when you go to a garage or a filling station where the attendant would sometimes take a thing that looks like this? Yes. And he and squeezes, he'll squeezes it. it yes. into the battery and pulls mm -hmm. it out. Well, you see that little float that's inside? Yes, that's That's just it. like this one, you see. Mm -hmm. And sure, when he takes the liquid up into the thing like this now, whether the thing floats or sinks will we'll give them some idea what the density of the liquid is. Because you see, when you first start out with a storage battery, the sulfuric acid and water mixture in there is quite dense when the battery is charged. Mm -hmm. But as the battery begins to run down, why the ch density changes. Until finally when it gets low, so that you have to charge it up again, it's not very dense at all. Oh, I see. So they use that. So when you charge it up again, then it gets more dense. So all mm -hmm. you have to do is use this to find out whether the battery is charged or not. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have samples from three batteries. You do? Batteries? Not, not really. <laughs> oh. Not really because you use sulfuric acid and there's no point. But uh, here are three glasses that are from three different batteries, let's say. And I want you to tell me whether I should charge them up or not. Well, I use the hydrometer. All right. Put in the first one. You squeeze it. Squeeze it and have it go up. Now, if it goes way up here to the, way up there to the top, it means that you better charge it up because it's sinking quite low. Yeah, it's not going up. See, well, you see it's off the yeah. bottom here. Yeah. But you see how it's floating just... Where that's about what halfway, yeah, about where the half. little white mark is. Mm -hmm. That means that the battery is pretty fair, but it'll that you don't have to charge it up quite yet. All right? Yeah. Get it out. Here, let me yeah. squeeze it for you. Okay. Try this one. That's very good. Very good yes. battery. It's all nicely charged. Mm -hmm. Last one. Well, it only went up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. looks like, uh, what would you say about that battery? You better go get it fixed. Yeah, better get it charged up. <laughs> so you see how useful it is to know something about the specific yeah. gravity of the, uh, of the various mm -hmm. uh, liquids, the, uh, of various liquids. You see, you can tell something about their combination by how, much, how dense they are. All right? Mm -hmm. your, your hands full of sugar water? Yeah, Mine sure are. They're all sticky. Here you go. Well, now, notice gasoline has a density of 0 0.72, and carbon tetrachloride has a density of 1.60. Mm -hmm. If you have pure gasoline, you're going to have a liquid density of 0 0.72, but mm -hmm. if you add a little carbon tetrachloride, you're going to make it a little more dense. Then if you add a, next, and then if you add a little more carbon tetrachloride, it's going to get denser and denser and denser until finally when you get down here, it's going to be all carbon tetrachloride and no gasoline. You'll have a density of 1.6. So now you can make a liquid of any density you want between 0 0.72 and 1.6. Oh, you mean just by mixing them? Just by, in fact, see. see these bottles over here? Oh, is that what it is? That's Mix what all them? those bottles are, oh. yes. This has a density of 0.72, so what is it? That's gasoline. In fact, there's 35 parts of gasoline to no, no. carbon tetrachloride. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next one? Well, 0.8 parts. 0.8. Well, 32 30. parts gasoline. Only three parts carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride, tetra 0.8. Mm -hmm. 0.9, 28 parts, only seven. To seven. Mm -hmm. Getting more and more power. One is 24 parts and only 11 parts come to chloride. That's the same as water, isn't it? Yeah, well, density okay. of one. Now I'll skip over a couple here. 1.3. 12 parts of the gasoline. Gasoline. And 23 parts See, carbon getting more and more carbon tetrachloride. Here's mm -hmm. the next to the last one. You have four parts of gasoline 
and 31 parts of carbon tetrachloride. 1.5? You're what's, getting to carbon tetrachloride. Yeah. What's the last one then? 1.6. 1. 1.6. 1. Mm -hmm. no, no gasoline parts. <laughs> and 35 of parts it, yeah. of carbon tetrachloride. Mm -hmm. So that you can see now that you have liquids of all different densities over here. What are you going to do with it now that you've got it? Well, I'll show you. See that little glass thing? Mm -hmm. Well, I took the densest one and poured it in here very slowly so that down here at the bottom is a layer of pure carbon tetrachloride, density 1.6. Then I took the next bottle and poured a little layer, density 1.5. Then the next bottle, 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, 1, 1, 9, 8, 7. Oh. 0.2. So each the, and they don't mix right away so that you have layer after layer of liquid here at various densities. Mm. Isn't that nice? Isn't that convenient? Sure, but what are you going to do with it? Find I mean, out about the plastics. But what does the density have to do with plastics? All right, come over here. I'll show you. First, I'll take this little cell and try to move it carefully so I don't mix them all up. And I'll put it here in the projector. Okay, now you want to grow out the projector. Now, there's our 1.6 working its way all the way up yeah. here to the thing. Now, look right over here on top of your head. Densities. And then you have, you have all... Polyethylene, what does it say? 0.85. Polystyrene. 1.23. Leucite, 1.28. Cellulose acetate. 1.40. Mylar. 1.50. Cellophane, 1.55. Now, you remember, you said that you knew that you recognized that this was cellophane over yeah, here. So I'll show you what I'll do. I'll cut off a little snip mm -hmm. and fold it so it won't. And then I'll take that little snip and I'll put it in that, in these liquid densities. Before I do, if it is cellophane, it should sink down and stop where? Oh, I see. If it has a density of 1.55. It ought to go way down out. near the bottom. Yeah, right here. All right, we'll try it. There it goes. It's going down fast. Mm. Now, why is it falling? Why does it stop and float up there? Well, I guess it can't. It's not dense enough. That's right. You see, it's denser five. than the liquid that it's going through, and it should stop at some place, you know, some place yeah. beyond 1.5, down in here someplace. So that's how you find out. That's, that's how you find out, because it. of their densities. That's right. Now it's beginning to slow up, so obviously it's getting someplace near its yeah. density, isn't it? Mm -hmm. About 1.55, just about. Well, it should get, it's certainly right down to this line right here, because this is yes. 1.5 all through here. But in here, the mi they begin to mix a little bit, uh -huh. so it should, you know, maybe, just, see, it's slowly beginning to settle. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's let that settle for a minute now, because uh, the next one, I'll, you remember that top of a refrigerator yes. container? sort of a soapy, milky-looking plastic. Well, I'll cut a little chunk like that off and put it in there. And you, you said before you didn't know what it was. No, but now I'll, now. now I'll put it in this gradient density cell, I call it, and you see if you can identify what it is. Here it goes. I think it stopped. It stopped already, yeah. yes. Point nine. Point nine. Well, it, it's somewhere between point nine, which is here, and point eight, which is up here. So about point seven, I guess. No, no. Oh, this is this is eight five. here, and this is nine here. So it's about eight five oh, or eight six so or something yeah. in there. You see. So it is point eight. Polyethylene, polyethylene. That's right. So whenever you have that soapy sort of plastic, uh, that that you know is cloudy, why well, you can be sure it's uh, oh, pretty sure it's polyethylene. But if you put it in this density gradient cell, you'll sure. Yeah. All right. Let's let's, do all of them. Find out. All right. We'll do that. Here comes the next one. This is a strong, tough, transparent plastic that you probably haven't had much experience with, but they use it a lot in space and in the army and various other places like that. I'll put it in there once and see if you can tell me what it is. There it goes. It's going awfully fast. It's slowing up. 1.4. Well, it's, it's, fall, it's falling through the 1.4. Yeah. This is a, No, it's coming down close to 1.5. It's still moving slowly. Yes. What would you guess it is from off there? Mylar? Mylar, mylar? that's right, yes. Is mylar. That what they use and by the way, look at your mylar. cellophane now down here. Yes, and we there, said it was going to be just about there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how about um, this kind of plastic? You know, it looks like glass, mm -hmm. but you can bend it. Have you any idea what that is? Glass? You've seen it, haven't you? You know, they make yeah. signs out of it and things like that. 
It might be lucite. Think of the lucite? All right. Well, one, here's a piece of it. 1.28. 1.28 if it's, it's lucite. 1.2. Okay, here, here it comes. Whoops, you're going. <laughs> Look, I was just going to say right here. Very close, isn't it? Mm. And you're so that's right. that's lucite. It is lucite. That's right. All right, now, here's the some of these um, inexpensive plastic forks and knives that you get, you know, with the packaged foods when you send out for them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take a little piece of that off. Have you any idea what it is? Um, there are only a couple left, aren't there? We have left. All right, here, let me try this one and see if you can guess what this is. 1.23, maybe? Here's 1.1 1 .1. It landed right on the label, so it's just slightly more than 1.1. 1 .1. I mean, uh, one point. So it's maybe about 1.1 1 .1 or so. About 1.1? 1 .1? It's certainly more than 8.5. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, here, we have one point. It's, it's floating a little high for polystyrene, but that's what it is. But you see, as I oh, move I this around, I sometimes mix them up so it may not be uh, too accurate. And another thing is happening here. You see the little bubbles that are coming off of that? What is that? Well, it's a chemical reaction, probably with either the gasoline or the carbon tetrachloride. So the little bubbles tend to make it float just a little bit. Oh, I see. That's and why And that's why it's staying up. a little higher. Yes, mm -hmm. I think anyway. Well, we have only one left. What's that? Uh, I think it's cellulose acetate. Cellulose acetate. And what it is is a piece of uh, a photographic film. This happens oh, to be 16 millimeter film. And I'll cut a piece off. If it is, if it is cellulose acetate, where should it go? It should go to 1.4. 1.4. 1 All right, let's right see here. if it does. Here it goes. It's going to bump into it. Yeah, it's going to bump into the loose side. Come on, get by there. That's it. Here's 1.4, just about here. Well, here, here's here. the top of it, it, here, you yeah. see. Oh. So it'll end up very close to that. And you see how it's slowing up? Yes. It's going to end up right there. Well, now, come on back over here now. You see all these various plastics? You now can tell them what they are by simply taking a, a little piece and uh, putting down on the projector. Yes. And now, you, remember, you find density by taking the weight of an object and dividing by its volume to get its unit density. And water is what? That was one. Is one. And you can make liquids then of varying densities and find out what things are or separate them, do anything you like. Very good. <laughs> now, this time, you go over there and look, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. And I'll put a piece of plastic in there, and you watch and see if you can identify what it is. Too hard. Okay.